Just fucking do it. Subscribe now. Because as, as poor as some of you feel that your economic status is in this room, you have infinitely more advantages than the people we're dealing with. Not in a bad way. Sal and I were uh, flying to Rome on Monday, I think. Tonight she's flying, she's driving down to see her mom one more time. Uh, and then we're flying to Rome. And then uh, down to Napoli to get on the boat, et cetera, et cetera. And the, uh, maybe we'll pop in. I'm not, I don't mean, I'm not saying this in a uh, irreverent manner. When we get in, slide into the Vatican, we will. The, uh, and then we're going to sail around on the uh, Elizabeth Taylor, Mr. Burton yacht. Which isn't a big deal to me. It doesn't give me a heart on or anything about that. Um, but it is kind of neat. But the only thing you need is money. It's not like Jesus Christ gave us an invitation or something, or Mah uh, Muhammad gave us an invitation. We just happened to have enough money, and Sally wanted to give me a special gift. Someday your significant others, or doubtfully, doubtful that your children will want to give you that kind of gift. Other question? <laughs> Sir? Absolutely, it's you. Yeah. The only the the only block um, is you. And even me, I still have the blocks. I have less blocks than you, but I still have blocks. The um, now you know I'm not feeling sorry for myself. That's the wrong word. You know, I had an opportunity to be knighted last year. I didn't take it. Whether I didn't get knighted for the right reason or the wrong reason, it doesn't matter. All I know is I didn't get knighted. And so I think about, fuck, I waited 40 years to get knighted. Was that the right decision then? But I don't second guess myself. Okay. It may, when I'm 105, I may decide it was the wrong decision. But um, you can't, you guys second guess yourself. Not just you guys. The, all groups, because of lack of confidence, you second guess yourself. You doubt. I may be wrong, but I'm, you know, but, uh, you know, I may be wrong, but as with uh, Steve Jobs, but I'm never in doubt. Don't confuse me with the facts. And I'm just talking about the engineers in the group. You, and confuse is really the wrong word. Don't fog my synapses with, with the facts. Most of the big money I've made seven or eight times was against the facts. When I took up option public, which was had never been done before, and I give all the credit to my brain, brainiac, finance guy, um, and I made a, a shit ton of money with no money, and we took something on public that didn't exist. It was just a fig newton of my imagination. But I've done a bunch of those things. But if you're not thinking that way, if you're not spreading um, your ambitions beyond the, beyond the spectrum of reality, then you're cheating yourself. Now, Elon Musk and Jobs and those kind of guys have always been credit, given credit for that. Now, the cheap cliche is thinking outside the box. And that is a cheap cliche. But it's reality. You gotta think outside the box. Other question? Do you make any bets up tonight? One to a million? No, there's two or three of you that have more potential uh, because you've got less baggage. A couple of the kids have, I won't say no baggage, but almost no baggage. He has baggage for a different reason. Not the kind of baggage you have. And I guarantee, no, I don't care, D. But I almost have a 100% guarantee that the um, 
French Foreign Legion will beat that out of them. Not 100% guarantee, but almost 100% guarantee they're going to beat them like a fucking man and mule. I've had three legionnaires here, all outstanding guys, different in each way, but different than you guys. Their baggage is different. In the old days, as we discussed, almost all French legionnaires were criminals, rapists, murderers, you know, etc. It's a little better now, but not much better. You may be the cleanest guy in the last hundred years that joined the French Foreign Legion. But that's admirable, you know? That's a different world he's jumping off into. And so I'm proud of him for that. And I've thanked him for his service. The, uh, then on the other end of the continuum, we got the slum landlord of mobile home parks, you know, which he may have probably kept quiet from you guys. But he, you understand mobile home parks operate, you can't hardly not make money, right? Did he mention it to anybody? No. And um, he's right, though. And I told him that you ought to, you know, uh, feed at the trough. <laughs> Not just because it's fat. <laughs> I mean, you just suck that shit up as much as you can. Because mobile home parks is a license to steal. He didn't use a steal word, but he understands the margins. I'm not lying about the margins. It's, so we got a little guy sitting here. But it's thanks, thanks to you. Well, he started because of me. That's correct. That's correct. And you thought about the French Foreign, French Foreign Legion because you heard in one of my YouTubes. I'm just, I'm just spotting my lips to see my lips move because I've, I've had a lot of experience with a lot of different things, just like India. I mean... If I was 20, 30 years younger, I'd go back to India. Using this model, if you don't get rich, you ought to kill yourself, metaphorically speaking, of course. But I mean, everything I've said, you know is true. But given all that information, you can still make a ton of money. I know you will. Yeah, yeah, because, because you know, you... Uh, Especially because he's from there, uh, he, and he knows all the pitfalls. And but I mean, it's it's loosey goosey. I mean, fuck, you can make tons and tons of money. And I talked to two or three of you. If I spoke Arabic, and I was you know thirty years younger, I'd move to Niam, and I would never come back. Yeah, yeah, but I'd leave my family. I'd leave everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm just telling you. They're gonna make. I said when in 2017, when Neom opened up, I said there was gonna be a thousand billionaires. I've now re recalculated that there's gonna be tens of thousands of billionaires made. Pardon? No, no, fuck no. It's it's now gone from 500 billion to 2.3 trillion. To 3.1 trillion. A lot of fucking money. <laughs> They're all government contracts. There's nothing. It's a hundred percent government contract. No, no, no. We, you, we, you got to turn your pocket. No, no. I'm not. I'm gonna be here when I'm a hundred. You know. Uh, the uh, although I have nothing to say bad about. Those governments, because they've all treated me like equal. Part of that is because I was nine years the fair haired boy of the Kuwaiti government, which arguably are the Jews of the Middle East, and they thought I was the smartest thing since, since Muhammad. And I probably am the smartest thing since Muhammad. But anyway, and I, everything I touched turned to gold. So I have track record. Not, you know, some landlord from Kansas. <laughs> I'm not telling you to stop it. But I mean, I have a track record, an international track record. And that's who your chairman has to have. No, you don't have to. I don't, if you don't do shit, 
but your chairman should have that kind of track record. Remember that you don't have to explain about them. And they're around. Every part of the world that you guys are from has got somebody that has that kind of reputation. And unfortunately for them, you know, there's 55, 60, 65, and they're broke. I think that's sad. I don't think that's how the economic system should work, but that's how it works. They're fucking not dead broke, but they're pretty, pretty broke. And that's certainly not our case, sadly myself. When we fly to Rome uh, Sunday, or Monday, whenever we leave, we're going to go to Rome a couple of extra days, and we're going to, you know, hopefully, if the pontiff has time for me. Uh, but since we're going to be in that area, I'm an idiot if I don't make it known to the, the Vatican uh, I'm in town. I'm, I'm less than the fucking idiot. And then we're going to go on the yacht that we rented, and we're going to sail around. Then we're going back to Rome. And again, the pontiff knows I'm around, and whether you know he wants to see me. Um, through all the nuns and bullshit, that, nah, I don't mean it that, that way, through the connections I have. Uh, and so maybe, maybe we'll get to see the pope or not. But if he doesn't, this is the second time in about uh, eight weeks that we're back in, in Rome. And yes, we do skew our travel schedule because I'd like to meet the, pon the pontiff before I die. I would. It's a special deal. Not mean like, it's not like me and the Maharajas, you know, but it's my Maharaja. Other question? Yes, sir. New York. Oh, New York, New York. If you can't make it, if you can make it in New York, you make it any place. Manhattan, you can become a, a trillionaire just on Manhattan. That's exactly what we're saying. <laughs> it is, but it's also extremely lucrative. Absolutely. Both. You can do government, city contracts, state contracts, county contracts, federal contracts. Both. Yep. There's a great film. I mentioned it to you the other day. It's called um, A Most Violent Year, and it's set in New York, and it's the embodiment of QLA. If anyone ever wants a reminder, just watch that. You'll see multiple aspects of what we've learned this week. What is it? Uh, it's called A Most Violent Year, or The Most Violent Year. It's on Netflix. Violent? The Most, most violent, violent Year. year. Yeah, and you'll see. Based it's on Mr. It's no, not no. based on Mr. Pena, but it's based on a businessman wanting to grow through acquisition and the things he goes through to get it. He even buys oil from Jews. Well. So it's, I don't know, maybe it is based on it, but... Just, I'm surprised just, you just, had any oil, but that's all. <laughs> just if you need a reminder, you want to, you know, you want to watch some shit online, or, you know, just have a break. There's things that we can do about and, it. And the um, the uh, just watch it. It's good. The the some of the stigmas. I've been I've done business very successfully with Middle East countries. I have a track record second to none, but I've also done business with the Israeli government. Second to none. And I did business with both, knowing I was doing business with each other. And they were very protective of me. They said, you have to get a second passport, Mr. Pena. These are the, um, uh, the Muslims. You can't touch the Jews. So I'm on the other side, and the Jews saying, you got to get a separate passport, Mr. Pena. And you, you, can't, you can't trust the Muslims. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, I know I... Uh, uh, and at that time, it was going around that I was a Jew, which I'm not. But, uh, you know, I know that you may, may have uh, preference towards, uh, you know, uh, the Hebrew faith. And, uh, so I listen to them, bullshit, bullshit. Then I go over to uh, Kuwait or Saudi, and they give me... Um, and so I said that. But I was successful with both. But if you don't perform, all the rest is bullshit. You disappear. 
And most of the kids that go there to do business, even with them, go prematurely. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And they get in trouble, and some of which disappear. And disappearing in the Middle East is no, I mean, there's no big fucking deal. It happens all the time. And the Khashoggi that got chopped up in the Turkish embassy or wherever he got chopped up here a few years ago, I knew his uncle, Khashoggi, who was the head of uh, OPEC many years ago. That's, they play hardball. And those of you, you know, uh, uh, let's say the three or four tough guys in boxing. If you lose the boxing match, you disappear. It puts a whole other perspective, you know? How hard you hit them, how many punches you take, how long the match lasts, you know? And the, uh, but I did well. I performed well under pressure. A lot of kids don't. Anything else? Another question? Yes, sir. They have government contracts. I told you, I think, the former uh, head of the most prominent uh, private school in Kuwait, 40 years headmaster, comes to the seminar, and I told him, and now he's a multi-billionaire, and he uh, is the main construction pipeline guy for oil and gas between uh, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and, 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 and the free uh, non um, Middle Eastern countries. He's about 75 now. And, uh, and just not dissimilar to what I told Roberto, a doctor for so-and-so. I mean, you, you know all these guys. You trained them. You taught them. Yes, sir. You never asked for anything. Correct. I mean, government contracts. Nice little old guy. He looks like in one of these uh, uh, Star Trek movies. It's like I'll be uh, uh, Kenobi and his little teeny guy. Yoda. Yeah, yeah, Yoda, exactly. Thank you. And uh, I got a, a card a couple years ago. He says, "Mr. Penny, he says thank you, thank you, thank you. Is there anything I can ever do?" Blah, 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 blah. And he said, "But God." You know, Allah sent me all this. I don't mean to demean Allah sent me this horse shit. And he said, but I, I could have, you know, I could have taken early retirement after 30 years instead of 40. And you're right, I could have been a trillionaire.